Ostrehu by Imploding Colon, read by Deathlight. Chapter 49, Chase. Rimudash squinted. Only at full speed did she realize how painful it was to soar directly into the mist. She gnashed her teeth and briefly climbed up. With a twirl, she flung her fur limbs back to the saddlebag and whipped out her goggles. She snapped them over her head, spun about, and burrowed through the clouds, unimpeded. Her shielded eyes darted left and right, desperately searching for a break in the mist. It occurred to her then that the monsters were indecisive in the fog, and thus it would be folly to think that they leave a trail in the dense floating clouds. Dang it! She hissed, seethed, and looked every which way as she glided blindly forward. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it! Think! Where would it have? Rainbow's heart skipped as she heard a shrill cry. It was a cold, somewhere beyond the billowing clouds. The foal's willing cries were loud enough to reach her through the wind. Hold on! She yelled and pulled up high. I'm coming, keep shouting so I can hear you! The coal kept screaming whether or not he had heard Rainbow's command. The blue pegasus climbed skyward, breaking through the top of the cloud. The unimpeded rays of the sun came down at a sharp angle. It was late into the afternoon, and judging from the burning horizon to her left, Rainbow judged she was flying north. And the creature? She gasped. She could see a leathery streak from below. Breaking barely over the forest and mountains that flung the northern faces of the huge structure that Winthrow clung to, its unearthly wings flapped victoriously. Meanwhile, a tiny brown shape flowed in the thing's arachnid limbs. Let him go, you filthy creep! Rimbadash's teeth grated from billowing lips as she went into a hard dive. The wind whistled past her ears. Her mane threatened to tear off from the sheer force of the plummets. She came within 400 feet of the monster. 300. 200. The creature twitched in midair, as if invisibly sensing Rainbow's presence. With a loud shriek, it dove low and sliced through the branches and leaves of several trees. Rainbow dipped down and threaded through the forest after it. Twigs, pine cones, and specks of bark went flying. Then, an overturned tree lay in their wake. The creature flew over it, Rainbow threaded under, crawled past a mound of dirt, picked up a loose branch, and prepared to clobber the monster from behind. Get ready to kiss the ground, you kid plucker! There was a flicker of lavender in the edges of Rainbow's vision, and her entire world spun. She gasped and spun wildly in midair. She dropped the branch altogether and clung to her throbbing skull. Panting, she could barely focus on the chase altogether as every sense of her body went dizzy. Uh, no, for the love of oats, not now. The creature ahead of her blurred into three, then four, then back to one again. All the while, it was gaining distance, flying further and further out of reach. The cold in the spiderly clutches sobbed and pleaded for mercy. Rimura snarled, the lenses of her goggles fogged. She felt like she was in the bottom of a centrifuge. It's pure torture, simply beating your wings. Ah, uh, come on, stop it, stop. <sighs> In desperation, she kicked off a tree, flexed her muscles, and propelled herself forward like a cannon. The world screamed psychonically about her dizzy spell. There is a spiral of branches, a flash of leather, then a strobe of a tiny foal's teary eyes. Rimura slammed hard into the side of the tree. The fold disappeared from view, replaced by the merciless texture of the earth. Rima bounced off the forest floor, rolling several feet, plunged off a mound of rocks, and came to a thudding stop on the north edge of a cliff. She just threw her teeth and clutched her head. The world was a streak of light swimming all about her. She couldn't tell which way is up. She only knew that she had failed, and it wasn't something she could help. Her urge to sob was overcome by the urge to vomit. Bravely, she fought back both impulses and focused her twitching eyes open. White turned yellow and red again. Her ruby irises spun to a stop as the madness settled. In the foggy gaze she had of the horizon, a tiny leather dot skimmed its way over the hills 
I'm making northeast, towards the craggy lines of the mountains. Panting, Rimadash forced herself up. Her legs wobbled, and her belly dropped low to the earth. She felt like she would implode at any second. A whimper came to her mouth. It swiftly turned into a snarl, then into a yell. It felt like tearing herself through her very flesh, but she managed to take off again. Her flight through the dizziness was an awkward thing, but it was flight nonetheless. With her goggled gaze locked in the northeast, she flew as fast as she could after the distant targets.